have been avoiding this for a week. My doors should have just been able to fit. It's almost like 82 inches and my opening is only 81. Who f***ed up, me or them? It should have been easy. I should be moving on from this. This should have been done by now, but it's not the case. If you've been watching my videos for the last few weeks, you'll know that my sliding patio doors and my front door do not fit. I framed them to the rough openings that were on my plans and the person who made my plans is the person who ordered my doors, but I just trusted that they were going to fit. I should have triple checked the quote and now we're here. But before I get ahead of myself, this is Simple Living with Biata. For the last two years, I've been on an incredible journey of learning how to build my dream home and homestead from scratch. The first year was land development, and this year is the home building series. And it's time to get the remaining of the doors installed, which means I need to rip a bunch of stuff out. Because it's first thing in the morning, I'm gonna start on the easier side. My plans called for the rough opening here to be 81 inches tall, but the door is actually 82 inches tall. So this rough opening needs to be 82 and a half inches tall for a half inch of foam in between the door and the header. This one, I'm gonna have to rip out the header, rip out all of these cripple studs and shorten them, reinstall them. It sucks, it really sucks. We spent a bunch of money on new sozzle blades and I bought a multi-tool or an oscillating tool or what Craig and I like to call a wicker whacker. I'm gonna just wedge in between here and try to pry it apart and then use a sawzall or the oscillating tool. Oh, I don't wanna do this. Apparently you just have to get really mad at it and then things start finally coming apart. Probably not actually the best advice. Honestly, this has been really defeating. Uh, it's taking me forever. I keep getting injured from the sawzall. I hate sawzalls. <laughs> it's been such a day. Also, if you ever go to frame your front door, put your header to the top plates and then just fill frame because doing this and taking everything apart, it sucks. It's literally just caught on that one nail. Now hopefully the house doesn't collapse. <laughs> I'm gonna start by cutting this bucking strip to where the rough opening needs to be. Oh, it's dying! Found my DeWalt charger. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start putting studs in. My daughter's gonna be here soon. My mom and Craig should be here soon. I'm just gonna cut that little strip that I was trying to cut a few days ago, but my batteries were dead. So time to cut it off. And then I have to cut the bucking on the sliding doors as well. I was just gonna try to like cut this strip down 
which I did, but honestly, this is getting too thin and isn't supported by anything. So I'm gonna take this bucking off and just put more bucking on the top here. Good morning. Here's some pipe for you. Here's some big O. That's Yay. next week's project with the excavator. And we have my mom here. I decided to bring him with me this time. Oh, yes, yes. It's good. Whoa! Oh, so close! I saw you struggling with your little pry bar so badly <laughs> that I had to give you one of my spares. Thank you. So so what would have been a better idea than planing, well, <laughs> planing a 2 by 6 job? Uh, <laughs> it might have been slightly easier to do with one by six with a second. <laughs> that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna make do with my little planer here. I, I've got nothing better to do for the next two hours. Two hours? I, this is only gonna take me ten minutes. Twenty. Twenty minutes. <laughs> if I blow a blade, then we're really screwed. Shoot, okay. And I'm done. Yeah. You might be wondering why my mom and Craig are here when I haven't even fixed the sliding door openings yet because my sliding doors need an extra inch of rough opening space for them to be able to fit. Well, I did fix them and somehow I lost all of the footage from that day. So unfortunately I can't show you, but this is what I did. So this was originally a double king stud, which doesn't fully make sense, but basically I made this into the jack because there only needs to be one jack stud and this is the filler piece here. And I'm gonna ask my inspector if I need to add that second king stud here or if I can just fill this with insulation. I will say yet again, you could have bought it in the store. <laughs> You're welcome. Darn it, what a waste of time and money, but a lot of waste of time. <laughs> I'll use that stuff in my garden. It's now 11, 11 in the morning, we're gonna finally get our doors in. This is take two if you didn't see my previous videos. this time with GRKs, especially for the heavier doors. <laughs> it looks so good. I love this door. It's so pretty. <laughs> Welcome to your home. Thank you. <laughs> so the door frame unfortunately wasn't perfectly plumb. So the issue with this door is we had to do a lot of adjusting with the nailing flange, which means using these composite shims. And now it's closing nicely. With a piece of plastic. <laughs> I have a bungee cord. The two doors are in, and they're not actually in though. Mom, stop messing with stuff. <laughs> Craig, you too, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> so they're in, Craig, they're in, but they're not actually in. We're just dry fitting them, which is smart to do when you have two doors that need to be leveled to each other. So we're gonna check the levels on them, and they are out of square. We're gonna square them up and get them centered. They look pretty damn good back here. Do they? That actually looks bang on. From what we can tell, it looks pretty good, pretty level. So I'm gonna put the PL underneath in silicone and then we'll adjust from there and get it squared up.
Look the door though. It's bigger at the top than it is at the bottom by like a sixteenth. Yeah, we just need a little bit more on this side. Right on the money. It moved for sure. I just I think it needs a bit more. This doesn't. That's good. That's pretty good. Yep. That's good. 7 three sixteenths. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. It's almost friggin' bang on. We're closed in! Yay! <laughs> yeah, so it looks really good. I'm gonna give you a little view of everything. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming and helping me out with this. It was a very emotional. <laughs> It was a very emotional journey of having to rip everything out. I just needed the support for this. So you can't do windows alone. Or doors. <gasps> or doors. doors. You can't do doors alone. <laughs> at all. Okay. Excellent. Thank you guys. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Are you guys ready to see it in its full glory? <laughs> Time for the full outdoor view. I've only fully seen it from the inside so far. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. <laughs> Good morning, so it's official. We have all the windows and the doors in. So yesterday and this morning, I've been spending a lot of time making phone calls because next week we're getting the excavator. So much planning and preparation goes into an excavator week because you have to plan out when you're getting certain materials to backfill and which days you're getting them. And I have three inspections next week. And to prepare for all the materials that need to come here, I had to clean. So I spent yesterday afternoon and this morning cleaning up all this space where our trailer is gonna go, but also where a lot of the materials are going to be brought in. And it's looking a lot better. So in order for next week to happen, I have to deal with all of this. The vapor barrier has fallen off the sidewalls of the foundation, and that's because water got in behind when the roof was still open. But this spot is an issue spot. It's really tricky to be able to get positive overlap here. The issue is this spot is completely open. Rainwater falls here, and then it was seeping in behind the vapor barrier. So there's no way that this vapor barrier is going to be usable. So I got myself a roll of blue skin. This is specifically for foundations. What's nice is I don't have to do any prep work. I can just apply it on. So I'm gonna apply it all the way around the bump out just for extra security and so that water stops getting in behind it. Eventually, this is gonna have flashing over it and silicone so that hopefully there's a bit of positive overlap, but I'm hoping the blue skin will stop water from getting in behind and getting stuck right on the foundation wall. This is gonna work well, I think. No, 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 okay. Yep, right, butyl stick. Okay, easier than I thought. It's going really well, and I kind of wish I did my whole foundation with it, but we're not going back now. The vapor barrier I have is good enough in the other spots. Since these are the sides that are gonna be more prone to moisture because there's no overhang on here, I'm gonna do this side in blue skin, and I'm gonna take the insulation off here and do the blue skin on this side. Yay, another issue. I think when this whole thing wasn't closed in, I was noticing water was going inside and like 
over this way and it seems to have pulled behind the vapor barrier here. It's dry over there, so it should be fine. It's just this corner here. I think what I'll do is cut this open, replace this whole corner section with the blue skin. All right, I gotta let this side dry off. Happy Sunday. <laughs> it's actually Sunday today. Don't normally work on Sundays, but tomorrow the excavator is coming and we need to get a little bit more done before it comes. There's just a bunch to clean up around the exterior of the foundation. So working today will be really helpful for that. And we have to roll out the big O. Cam is here with me. Our daughter's watching a movie. So we have like about an hour and a half to try to get stuff done. It's a bit messy out here. <laughs> It's looking better over here, and now it's time to roll out the big O. I think Sam loves doing big O. <laughs> I am big O. Can we do this? Looks we gotta lift it up and we're rolling it. Oh, dear God. Yeah. This is why no one wants to be a landscaper. Oh, it's working. <laughs> Getting close oh. to the house, we gotta get a close. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> We got it unrolled, our marriage survived. <laughs> and uh, we, <laughs> we have excess, so, and an extra 100 foot roll that I could probably return. It's official, our home is finally watertight. And what an incredible journey to get to this point. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. It's the best way to support me and my family and so that you can stay up to date on all the new episodes. And be sure to check out the link linked in my description for my YouTube memberships platform to get all the extra updates and details. And with that, I cannot wait to see you next week.